Good evening. My name is Tim. I am the vicar of St. John's Church in Hildenborough. I'm delighted to see you this evening for our online carol service. Sorry we can't be in the building, but we are still having our carol service online, and I hope that all of us who are watching tonight will understand a deeper meaning of Christmas. So I would love now just to pray as we start our service. Father, thank you so much for Christmas. Thank you so much for Jesus. We welcome you here now and we pray, Lord, for everybody watching that they would have a real connection with you and a real deeper understanding of what Christmas means for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's start with a carol. many things that we do in the church to prepare for Christmas. We have our Advent candles and each week on the run up to Christmas, for the four weeks before and on Christmas Day, we light candles. 
This candle here represents all the, the heroes of the Old Testament like Noah, Moses and uh, people like Solomon. And this candle we light on the second week of Advent, which reminds us of the prophets, people that prophesied about God's will to the people and the kings of the day. This candle represents John the Baptist, which we light, who foretold the coming of Jesus. And this candle here is for Mary, the mother of Jesus, who birthed him, the only woman uh, in the world to birth God himself. And finally, on Christmas Day, we light this candle here, for Christmas for Jesus. So I'm going to light these candles now and the idea is that as we light them we think a little bit about what Christmas means for us. Now some people probably don't read some of the stories from the Old Testament but they foretold about God's plan to reunite the world with himself and God realized that Jesus or God himself would come in the form of a human being and live amongst us. And it gives me great delight to light here this candle for our John the Baptist candle, who was a man who was born to tell others and foretell about Jesus, who met Jesus himself and baptised Jesus. So here are our Advent candles. The fourth and the fifth will be lit and on Christmas Day, if you join us, you will see us light, finally light, the fifth candle to celebrate Jesus. This Christmas might feel strangely different. But it's still a timeless truth for everyone across the world, whether far away or close to home. There'll be new memories to make and old memories to tell laughter to share with family, friends or neighbours. Little ones, big ones, even furry ones. <laughs> There'll be presents we give and blessings we share. Generous tables, crackers to pull, and empty places for those not with us. Some who are gone forever, and some who are just not able to travel. We'll have eyes filled with tears, and hearts with love. Whether there'll be arms around us, or chats around screens, giggles on phones. <laughs> We'll still have trees to set up and cards to write. Calendars to open and carols to sing. Candles to light, prayers to say. And the greatest story of all, with light from the stable and the Christ child promising. <laughs> Comfort and joy for everyone this special Christmas time.
prophecy of the one to come. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. But to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Thanks be to God. So, what does Christmas mean to me? I'd like to go all the way back to when I was eight years of age and I was sent away to boarding school. And it was tough. Those years of boarding school were very, very tough. There was not much joy. The greatest joy we ever had was when it was time to go home for the holidays. But there was no better holiday for us than Christmas holidays. Because in the dormitories at school, we were allowed, very special privilege, to put up Christmas decorations. So from the age of eight, for many, many years, Christmas meant for me celebration, joy at the end of that particular term, colorful decorations and going home to mum and dad where we'd all have presents and turkey and wonderful family time. And then as I grew older, I became a Christian, very late in life actually, when I was 40, and I learned the meaning, the true meaning of Christmas. And I was still filled with joy, but it was a different joy. It was the realization that that little baby God, being born as a human being, was born for a reason. To save us, to save us ordinary people, and to give us a chance of a new life with him. That was real joy. That was saving joy. That was mature joy. And I think that was the joy that the three wise men felt when they saw him. So with joy in my heart, happy Christmas. Yeah.
promise of birth is promised. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you were small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labour gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. And he will be their peace. When the Assyrian invades our land and marches through our fortresses, we will raise against him seven shepherds, even eight leaders of men. Thanks be to God. This is how it came about. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream 
and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Thanks be to God. Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went from his town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to the firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in the manger, because there was no more room in the inn. Thanks be to God. Dream. 
The shepherds visit the manger. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what he had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God for the things they'd heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thanks be to God. Why do I believe Jesus Christ is the truth? Well, primarily because he said he was. And as I read the scriptures, I can't help but think if truth was personified, it would look like Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. He also said, the truth will set you free. And since I gave my life to Christ as a boy of 11, I've been experiencing that liberating power of Jesus in my own life. Truth works and it's working for me. Hi there. I'm often asked, what does Christmas mean to you? Well, I mean, for me, it means different things because when I was a child, I was born in India, we were separated. The family were all over the country and Christmas to me as a kid meant I'm going to see my aunts and uncles, my favourite cousins. And of course, we got gifts. But that Christmas was strictly once a year. I've got a feeling now that Christmas should be part of our life all the time because it represents something very special. In the mid-60s, I got very interested in spirituality. That's the time I became a Christian. And what I recognized was that the miracle of birth still fascinates us. Just a baby being born is an absolute miracle. Jesus' birth was a stupendous miracle that somebody that was a spiritual divine creature became like one of us. So for me now, Christmas is every day of the year. Every time I pray, I pray, I think of Jesus, I think of God. Easter is also important, but I always find it difficult to feel triumphant because he died. And I know he had to die for us, but for me it's still today, Christmas is now an everyday part of my life. And so it gives me great pleasure to wish you all a very, very happy Christmas and let it last all the year round. ALF is an opportunity to explore the meaning of life. And it's designed primarily for people who don't go to church, people who wouldn't call themselves Christians. And it's an opportunity to discuss the really big questions like, why am I here? What's the purpose of life? Does life have an ultimate meaning? What happens when I die? Is forgiveness possible? And these are the kind of questions it's really hard if you go to a football match or baseball to say to your friend, what do you think the meaning of life is? You better think you're crazy. But this is a place where you can come with other people who are outside of the church, people who wouldn't call themselves Christians, and discuss these really big questions in a way that's very low-key, unpressurized, non-confrontational, based on respect for people regardless of what they believe or what they think. And it's a really fun way to explore the really big questions of life. Alpha is now running in 169 countries, in 110 languages. 60,000 churches are running it in every kind of cultural situation. It's running on campuses, it's running in the workplace, it's running in residential homes. And the same story, the one thing that unites all those different places is the stories of the people whose lives have been transformed by Jesus Christ. And I hear testimony after testimony of people coming to know Christ. Mild, God and sinners 
Word becomes flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that had been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. We might not be having the perfect Christmas, but remember, the first Christmas wasn't perfect. It was miraculous, but messy. The truth that Jesus came to earth is the proof that God cares. The story of Christmas is the story of God's relentless love for us. Jesus did not come to make God's love possible, but to make God's love visible. Christmas is the time and place where God pulls back the curtain so we can see his face. Christmas is the answer to our questions. Where is God? Who is God? God couldn't have made himself bigger to impress us, so he made himself smaller to attract us. Christmas means God with us. The Christmas message is that there is hope. The only true historical reason for celebrating Christmas is as the birthday of Jesus Christ. But nobody celebrates the birthday of a dead person. It is because Jesus is alive that there can be a true celebration of his birthday. One of the things I really like about this season are school nativity plays. And there was one infant school where there was one boy who was desperate to play the part of Joseph. And the day arrived when the teacher announced all the starring roles, but he wasn't chosen to play Joseph. And he was very, very upset. But he did get the part of the innkeeper, but he didn't want to be the innkeeper. Anyhow, the day arrived when the school presented their annual Christmas production to the entire school, all the families and all the friends. And then you get to that point where Mary and Joseph arrive at the innkeeper's door and they knock on the door. The door opens, the innkeeper comes to the door. Joseph says, can my wife Mary and I, can we come in for the evening? And the innkeeper said, she can come in, but you can't. I wanted to be Joseph. There are many different versions of Christmas. And because there are many different versions of Christmas, it is good for us every Christmas time to stop and to go back to the original script. Sir David Suchet will now read from the original script. 
Hello, I'm David Suchet, and I'm absolutely delighted to be reading this wonderful passage of Scripture for this Christmas service. The particular passage is taken from Matthew 2, verses 1 to 11, and you'll all know it. It's the story of the wise men. But I want you to listen to it as though you've never heard it before, because there's so much in it and see what we can rediscover together. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In the original script, which David Suchet read for us, we heard there of a group of people known as the wise men. Now, I do have to confess as a man that those two words, wise men, don't always go together. I wonder what would have happened if they were wise women. Well, I think if they were wise women, they would have asked for directions and arrived there on time. They probably would have brought a casserole. They would have cleaned out the stable. They would have helped with the delivery and they would have brought far more practical presents. But the original script says the wise men came, bowed down and gave Jesus gifts. And they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Now, why? Why gold? Why frankincense? Why myrrh? Well, it's symbolism. And the symbolism behind the gifts is very profound. Gold in the Bible is a symbol of kingship. So by giving gold, you are acknowledging their kingship. By bowing down and worshipping them, you're saying, I want to come under your reign and rule. Frankincense in the Bible is a symbol for prayer. It's a symbol of communication. And they had understood that God had come to the earth to communicate with people. And by giving frankincense, they're saying, we want to communicate with you. Myrrh in the Bible is a symbol of burial. It's a symbol of death. And they had understood that the king had come to the earth to do something for us. 
What's gone wrong? That is a very important and good question to ask. What's gone wrong? What went wrong? The heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. Unless we understand the truth of that, we will never understand the solution. I think one of the easiest ways of understanding what's gone wrong is to think of your life and think, what would it be like if it was all projected onto a huge screen? Everything we ever thought, everything we ever said, everything we've ever done. How would you feel if you saw the film of your life in detail? I wouldn't want to see the film of my life because I don't need convincing that I've thought, that I've said, that I've done things that I shouldn't have. The reality is this, all of us, we are all on the naughty list. When we go back to the original script, the word for that is sin. Every time we disobey God, every time we break God's commandments, God's principles, God's values, that's called sin. And it disconnects us from God. And it works a little bit like an overdraft in a bank account. If you've got an overdraft and I've got an overdraft, you can't help me and I can't help you. The only one who can help us is someone in credit. Jesus was the only one in credit. If our greatest need was information, then God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need was money, then God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need was technology, then God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need was pleasure, then God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness. That's why God sent us a saviour. I remember many years ago when my son Michael was about four years of age, he and I went to buy a present for his mum, my wife Killy, for Mother's Day. And we walked into this store and as we walked into the store, I saw this huge sign that said, do not touch. All breakages must be purchased. I mean, I don't know why I didn't just walk out, but we kept looking around. And before you knew it, both of us, Michael and myself, began touching things. But then I saw it from the corner of my eyes. He knocked something over and I tried to reach out. It felt like slow motion, but whatever it was that he touched fell to the ground and smashed. The manager stood there beside us within seconds and pointed to the sign, do not touch, all breakages must be purchased. And I said, well, I didn't do it, he did it. And I thought, I'll leave Michael in the store to sort it out, I can leave. But there was no way Michael could pay for what was broken. Only his daddy could pay for it. In a similar way, you and I have broken God's commandments, have broken God's values, have broken God's principles, and we can't pay for it. That's why Jesus paid 
for it. You see, the wise men understood that, and that's why they gave myrrh. Jesus, you've come to die. Because by dying on a cross, it was as if he was cashing a check, signed with his own blood, to say, here is the check to clear your overdraft. Jesus Christ purchased for us forgiveness. The Bible puts it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. I like the way that Charles Wesley in 1739 expressed it in one of his carols. Hark, the herald, angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. The whole Christmas story is a story of reconciliation, of God coming to earth to reconcile us to himself. One Christmas, I was given a gift certificate from a very prestigious store in London. There was an expiry date and I left it on my desk. And then within days and weeks, it got covered up. And one day, while I was clearing my desk, I found it. But the date had expired. I rang them, I appealed, I begged, and they said, no, it's past, it's past, it's too late. Every single one of us is being offered a gift this Christmas. That gift is Jesus. At Christmas time, when we receive gifts we don't really need, God offers us a gift we can't do without. The Bible says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The gift of Christmas is Christ. And when we receive Christ, we receive a savior. We receive strength. We receive serenity and we receive security. I sometimes see it a bit like those babuska dolls that when you receive the doll, but inside there's another one and there's another one and there's another one. And in a similar way, that's what we experience when we receive Christ. God never offers us a gift we are not capable of receiving. And I received the gift of Christ on the 9th of February, 1975. And I have been profoundly changed by knowing Jesus. Philip Brooks wrote a beautiful carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And in the final verse of that carol, he wrote these words, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. 
O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel. I think those words, that prayer, are just beautiful. And they, that prayer sums up what our response should be to Christmas. The wise men understood it. Jesus is King of Kings, who's come to communicate with us and came into the world, not just at the cradle, but went to the cross to purchase for you and I forgiveness so that we could all experience forgiveness from the past, new life here today, and a hope for the future. The gift of Christmas is Christ. Have you received Christ? If you haven't, why don't you receive Christ today? Receive Christ now. Now, maybe you did, but then you got diverted, distracted, maybe even found yourself derailed. Well, why don't you receive Christ afresh today? And in a moment, I'm going to pray those words from Phillips Brooks, beautiful, O little town of Bethlehem. And as I pray these words, why don't you pray those words and make this a reality for you today? As I pray the words, if you would like to receive Christ or reaffirm your faith, join with me and pray these words as I personalize them. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend on me, I pray. Cast out my sin and enter in. Be born in me today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O oh, come to me, abide with me. My Lord, Emmanuel. Amen. I pray for every one of you that have prayed that prayer now, either for the first time or a way as reaffirming your faith. I pray that you will experience Christ's forgiveness and be set free from the past. I pray that you will experience his presence by his Holy Spirit. I pray that you will experience his peace. I pray that you will experience his well-being in your life. And I pray that you will experience his protection. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I do hope you've been inspired. I hope you've been encouraged. And I want to pray a Christmas prayer over you and for you. May God grant you the light of Christmas, which is faith, the warmth of Christmas, which is love, the radiance of Christmas, which is purity, the righteousness of Christmas, which is justice, the belief in Christmas, which is truth, the all of Christmas, which is Christ. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus, may God grant you all these things, not just at Christmas, but throughout the new year and all the years to come. Merry Christmas to you all. I know it's been really hard for all of us in some ways from what I've been hearing in the village and people talking to me 
with this last year of lockdown. And I'm so, so impressed as I hear stories of how people are loving one another in the community. It's astonishing. And it just shows that actually when the going gets tough, people step up and care for one another. I'm thrilled to hear that. And it's just absolutely mind blowing how people are going the extra mile. I'd love to pray for us, for this to continue. And when COVID stops and these vaccines that come out are working, I'd love us to continue this sort of sense of deeper community we're experiencing at the moment. It also might be that you're finding uh, Christmas hard. Loved ones may not be there. You'll have an empty chair at your table. One, because uh, people may have passed on and they're now no longer with us. Or it could be because of COVID. They, they can't come because of lockdown and that's gonna be hard. It might be that you're feeling alone at Christmas or isolated and struggling. However you're feeling, I would love to pray for you. Let us pray. Father, thank you for our amazing community in Hildenborough. Thank you for every single member of our community. Lord, would you bless them, care for them, watch out for them. I pray they would know that you love them and that you are willing them on to prosper and do well in whatever they're doing in life. And Father, my heart for them is that they would know your love for them. They would know that you care about them. You're championing their success like a father on the sidelines of a pitch, just shouting for them to do well. And Lord, I pray everyone in our village would come this season of lockdown to reflect on why they're here, where they've come from and where they're going one day. And the bigger questions of life would lead them to you. And Father, I pray as a church we can continue to bless our community. Thank you for all the things the community do with our church, Father. And I'd like to pray a prayer of protection over everybody in our village, in the parish, that uh, COVID would sort of not really hugely affect us like it has some places. I'd love us, to, Lord, to, to get through this together and that as many people as possible can get vaccine, get the vaccine quickly and get on with their lives. And Father, I do pray for a great connection between the church and the village and that you would bless everybody now who's watching and help them know, Lord, that this Christmas is just one of many that they can get through. And after the new year, life in how we would call the new normal would get on again and we could get to see those people we love and to do the things that fill our soul and hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Just to say, we would love to invite people to join us on Sundays. We have been told that face masks are required for all services, unless exempt, plus social distancing in households or permitted bubbles. Our services will all be live streamed through Christmas and New Year. You can watch on YouTube, on our YouTube page, St. John's Hildenborough, or on our Facebook page, where the stream goes directly to those pages. You can download our Chancel app, which is a phone app on Android or uh, the App Store. Look for Chancel, it's a green emblem. And then when you go into that, made by Piota, you can then type in St. John's Church Hildenborough and get all the information you need from there. The first Sunday of, well, the first Sunday on the 27th, there'll be no service here. Everybody is worn out. They need a break. But then on the 3rd of January, we will be starting again with Susan Trowbridge and Trevor Long leading our service. Just to say, if you do bring the children in on Christmas Day, get them to bring a little present with them. They can show me and we can sort of see what they've had for Christmas, which I think is a lot of fun. so sweet and clear when heaven's light and music fell 
a mercy found us here glory in the highest and on the earth be peace glory to god the angels sing he came to tell the father's love his goodness and his grace to show the brightness of his smile the glory of his face so glory in the highest and on the earth be peace glory to god your children sing his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father Prince of Peace for all eternity. Oh, his name shall be He came to lift the weary ones, give peace and perfect rest, to take away our burdens and to give a glorious gift so glory in the highest and on the earth be peace glory to god the world will sing his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting Prince of Peace for all eternity Oh, His name shall be As well as our uh, online carol service tonight, we have 
something that's going on on Sunday evening in the village, you can, at 4.15, we will give you some information on our Facebook page. We'll be having, having a travelling nativity going around the village and there will be nativity characters singing and uh, telling some of the stories from the scriptures. And the idea is that you can come out of your house in your social bubble so we don't break the law. And they will be moving around. All the information will be on Facebook. This journey will finish at 6.30 at the church. And then there will be an opportunity to visit the church, if you so wish, and view the final tableau until 8 o'clock with all the nativity people here. We will light all the candles in the church. The church will look splendid, as it always does. And we'd love to see you if you can come. It is technically a service, which we're allowed to do. But you will be coming through the church, seeing the lights and everything that's going on here, and then exiting. So it won't be too long inside, but we'd love to see you. Sort of get a Christmas feel from inside the church. There'll be carols playing in the background as well. So I look forward to seeing you to that if you can make it. It also will be streamed. As I finish in prayer, would you join me with a response at home, which is, hear our prayer. Christ, for whom there was no room in the inn, give courage to all who are homeless. In your mercy, Father, hear our prayer. Christ, who fled into Egypt, give comfort to all refugees. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, who fasted in the desert, give relief to all who are starving. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, who hung in agony on the cross, give strength to all who suffer. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, would you hear our prayer? now and make us one in heart and mind in Hildenborough to serve you with joy forever amen and may the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus establish strengthen and settle you in the faith and the blessing of the Father Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service. I hope you enjoyed it, hearing all the stories and the message of hope from J. John. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Come and say hello if you've not met me before or any of the team. And also we look forward to seeing you possibly tomorrow night in the church also on Christmas Eve uh, for Midnight Mass and Christmas Day. God bless.